It's not all that surprising, because after all, when a baby turns into an adult, you don't suddenly say, aha, it ceased to be a baby, it's now turned into a child. And then, aha, it's now, it ceased to be a child, it's now become an adult. It happens so gradually, you don't notice the change. It, we are like a flea sitting on the hour hand of a watch. You can't see it, you can't see it moving. Uh, it moves so slowly that you, that, that you don't see it. Now, in spite of that, we do force upon every fossil that we find by convention, the binomial name, either say Australopithecus afarensis or Homo habilis. And that's meat and drink to creationists, because whenever a fossil's found, it's either an ape or a human. We don't have a name for an intermediate. We can't call it an intermediate, because when we don't have the nomenclatural apparatus to do so, and they prey on that convention. And maybe it's time evolutionists started while never actually abandoning the, the Linnaean binomial convention, nevertheless admit that there may be times when a fossil doesn't deserve to be given a name, simply should be called intermediate between some other recognized fossils. Think about it another way. If every creature that had ever lived fossilized, then naming would, would be impossible. Everything would be intermediate. You'd have to give it a name that reflected the, the shading between species and genera. The next chapter, I'm just going to read the beginning. That irascible genius J.B.S. Haldane, who did so much else besides being one of the three leading architects of neo-Darwinism, was once challenged by a lady after a public lecture. It's a word of mouth anecdote and John Maynard Smith is sadly not available to confirm the exact words but this is approximately how the exchange went. Evolution skeptic. Professor Haldane, even given the billions of years that you say were available for evolution, I simply cannot believe it is possible to go from a single cell to a complicated human body, with its trillions of cells organized into bones and muscles and nerves, a heart that pumps without ceasing for decades, miles and miles of blood vessels and kidney tubules, and a brain capable of thinking and talking and feeling. JBS, but madam, you did it yourself, and it only took you nine months. <laughs> that chapter is about embryology and the important relationship between embryology and evolution. You can't understand evolution fully unless you have some grasp of the embryonic processes that generation after generation start with a single cell and give rise to an adult, which then reproduces, producing a new single cell, and so on. The processes of embryology are extremely complex. They themselves must have evolved. And that, that chapter is aimed at that understanding. 